Well, cheers for bearing with me for that little pause there, guys. Uh, I will pick up the mini and we'll have a look at him. Uh, so tonight uh, we're looking at doing this little gentleman. Um, so as is probably very clear, let me get a nice side profile. Um, the Blood Red Skies miniature range, I really like. It's got a good level of detail. There's plenty to work with in the grooves and such. Um, let's have a look underneath. You can see where it's got the wheels stowed. Uh, there's a lot of um, rivet and groove work to, to play around with and hopefully we're going to chuck some contrasts on and see what we can do with it as well. So uh, hopefully you guys out there have got a bit of hobby on the go as well. Uh, I've got the chats up so I should be able to keep an eye on everything. Uh, late model BF109. Ooh, oh, Jim, let me let me bring the card in for you, son. <laughs> so I can see we've got Facebook, we've got a couple on Twitch, and uh, we've got Jim's just uh, run one by me on YouTube. So yeah, this is a 1940, uh, according to the Blood Red Skies card. And this is going to sort of pair up with my Fock Wolf uh, 190s, um, which again in sort of 41 started to make their way into Europe and, and have some skirmishes over sort of rural France. So looking forward to adding these to my collection. Um, I do like this colour scheme with the yellow. I'm going to go for something similar, but not quite the same. Uh, the main difference is being uh, I'm looking to leave the wing tips. I'm going to keep the tail section yellow. Uh, do the front chassis from the engine, but not as far up as the cockpit. Uh, I want the prop uh, yellowed out at the tip rather than the black end fitting with the black blades, although if it had blades I would do them black. And then on the body itself, um, on the underside we're going to go for a, a very pale grey and um, get that almost uh, dirty sky look, um, which was quite popular in the colour schemes. I'm not looking to be you know, perfect, historically correct. I don't have the exact colours. I have what I've got. Uh, we're going to be playing around with contrasts just because it's a it's a session tonight and we're looking to get a, about an hour in and then move on to um, uh, something else. Uh, these being nice little models, uh, I've got the full squadron, I've not just got an individual. So, you, you know, when you get these up and running, you kind of want to be able to just bash it all together in a, in a reasonable time frame. Now, the bit I like to start with first, I'm going to start with the cockpit. Uh, and for that, I'm just going to grab a bit of uh, pallid witch flesh, thin it down on the pallet. And the reason I do this is uh, so after I can just chuck on some very paled out blue. I'll just give this a shake in the background. Um, and uh, get that sort of almost sky blue, light blue reflection that you used to get on the, the cockpit glasses that you see on a lot of the scale models and the models for this sort of range. Get some rattling going on. Uh, the mic volume will change a little bit because the mic is close to me, but I'm, I'm definitely going to be moving around a little bit to to manhandle all the stuff in my area tonight, he says. Um, I did have some background on earlier. I just started, I found Netflix has got the Untouchables on. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a To me, it's a bit of a classic, a bit of Elliot Ness, uh, Sean Connery, Kevin Costner, Andy Garcia, and uh, yeah, um, uh, oh, obviously De Niro uh, as Al Capone. So I'm part way through that, I begrudgingly stopped to paint a model for first hit rep tonight. <laughs> um, the lighting, uh, as we get some paint on this thing, it'll start to show a little better. I'll try and uh, keep the light off to the side like this, so you've got some of the shadows that you can see. So looking at the windows, it's actually got a lot more panelling than the Spitfire and, and some of the other aircraft that I've painted, uh, and the Fort Wolf as well. It's got sort of three either side, it's got a three piece front and then a small front top. Uh, and then it's actually got three on top as well. Now I've done an initial Wraithbone spray of this. I wanted to keep the light colours so that it would show stuff through. Uh, feel free to have a chat and uh, any questions in the comments. And uh, I'm just going to jump straight in. Um, and with it already being a light colour around it, I'm not too... I'm just looking to get uh, a bit of white towards the top especially. Is that yellow not historically required? <laughs> Yeah, I, this is true. Uh, I did have a look through, uh, especially one of my favourite colour schemes actually is some of the North Africa stuff. But um, because um, my friend Mark and I will be playing, not the Battle of Britain, we pushed past the Battle of Britain. The Brits have defended the island and we wanted to look at what was coming next. And we chose 
to sort of play the, the fight over France. Um, partly because I picked up the Focke-Wulfs and they came a little later to that area, sort of late 41. And partly because I think it's part of the fight that Battle of Britain wasn't just the end. I mean, don't get me wrong, the amount of aircraft that went up and the casualties on both sides was, was, was pretty huge. But it carried on, you know, and I think a lot of people uh, forget that as well. Um, let me just grab up. So in the background, I, I should have probably done a screenshot of it. I've uh, also got a sort of quick reference. And essentially it means that when it comes to the yellows, we'll be sort of yellowing out the tail section here, running up to sort of just the midpoint on a slight angle. Um, where the exhausts here come out of the front of the engine uh, all around there underneath that chassis and directly up and over the nose chassis to the opposite side will be yellow as we've said and then we'll get a bit of color on top that's a dark gray all the way running along the spine and then we're going to have a go with uh, a favorite tool of a lot of people mark one bitty piece of sponge um, and a set of uh, snippity snip snip to hold on to it so I don't leave fingerprints all over it. I'm going to try and do some just a little bit of speckling down the side here and here um, with a bit of grey as well. Um, I don't see it taking much more than an hour. Famous last words and uh, we'll see how we get on eh? The uh, I'll keep sticking it here when I need to sort something out that way it's kind of in shot even if it's a little bit out. So I wanted that sort of off grey from underneath um, you can also get it up to sort of a very pale blue, but I kind of like the grey idea. So I'm going to sort of do the underside with a pocket three white. This is one of the contrast paints. Like I say, I'll be using what I've got. I have a mix of contrast paints, generally Citadel. Uh, it's just something that I've had for a while. It's not any particular reason. Uh, I have had Army Painter. I have had Vallejo. Uh, I do like pretty much all the paints. I think they've all got their places. And I think for, for historical, the ones that actually colour match are probably the best of which there are a few ranges out there. Uh, so for this, I'm just really going to slap dash on the whole underside that's not yellow, essentially. So this is where it gets dangerous. Load up the uh, load up the paintbrush. Get a grip in a place, I'm happy. So I'm hoping to keep all... I'm not too worried about getting on the wheel sections, and we should get this to a start to see all these details, and the colour will come up now, so it doesn't look just like a a very pale item. Uh, the aim for me to, is to not leave any pooling so I'm trying to drag it off towards the edge so I'm not leaving anything that's going to dry. It's actually about 26 degrees C in the UK today. Jim you'll have to convert that to Fahrenheit. I have no idea what Fahrenheit that was. What like 80 something? And uh, yeah I, the detail on the panel lines is lovely. Um, there's a lot, a lot of, of nice detail. Another thing I like using contrast for is just that initial layer, not necessarily to be the colour, but to show me what I've got to work with. Um, but this is about getting your squadron of aircraft, I think you get six in the box set, up to tabletop standard in a fairly short time. Um, and one of the biggest boons of the Warlord range when it comes to Blood Red Skies is they have that nice level of detail that means you can do that reasonably quick. So I'll just try and make that straight across the chassis at the front. Uh, I have a toothpick jammed in here. Uh, I find it's actually one of my favourite cheap tools, especially for these aircraft. They um, it's, it's just allows me to manhandle it in another way. It's, it's just a, a nice little cheap bit of kit to attach to something and gives you what you want. The aircraft themselves, they have like a triangular fitting for the stock that goes into them that they support on, that you do your advantage and your disadvantage flying with. And um, shaping the toothpick just by cutting the head off and then trying it and just seeing where you need to clip and adjust it slightly is very straightforward, it's very easy. So you can see the complete difference in, you can barely see anything under that light and then we turn it over now and you know you've got loads of chassis lines coming up. You can see where the wheels are stored away, it's actually quite nice. 
Oh, Jim's putting up some info about the very narrow wheelbase when landing and takeoff, and accidents were common for the normal pilots. So he's talking about they've got the wheel section here running up to a support strut that would actuate out in and out, and the same on this side. So it's not even much wider on the model, at least, than the chassis of the the main fuselage. So these stringers and, and supports that run all the way along would be, uh, yeah, you can see how it could be very well would be very unstable. Um, I'm just quickly going to run the edge down the f sides of the wings as well. Get some colour onto them. And some of the good things is, again, the line detail does travel into that area. Um, I was quite lucky. We had a, where I work uh, is at an airfield. And just before COVID, we had a, a birthday for that airfield. It's an old RAF base. And it was the weekend before the Battle of Britain flight that does the London to celebrate that sort of period. And I was very lucky in the sense that they, um, with it being a big birthday for our unit and it being critical in the in the sort of the period of the war, they um, did a flyby display for us like a personal one. They flew up, so it was sort of a test to run out the aircraft. I think they, we had a uh, Messerschmitt come into the crowd a Mustang, a Spitfire, and I want to say a Lightning as well, um, which was fantastic. We got to, they didn't rob them off, they left them so we could literally stand right next to them. My friend from on Tabletop, Commodore Rob, uh, was with me at the time. He, um, his mind was blown because he's, I think he's a, a huge Spitfire fan, um, he's a huge historical buff. So seeing those aircraft come in, uh, we had a Blenheim, uh, Bristol, um, there was all, all sorts of beautiful, beautiful aircraft there. Some I'd never seen before. The, I think there was the Blenheim that had the four guns mounted on its nose. Squat little black thing. It was, uh, it looked mean as hell. It looked like the equivalent of a stealth fighter. It was, uh, it was a, a reasonable sort of a mid-size aircraft, but such a beast. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to go over the nose chassis all the way back to the tail now. I'm fairly happy that I've not got too much pooling. Um, and anywhere I have I just want to pull it away while it's still damp but if you it's one of these things it's like a it's a risk reward if I go in once it's started to dry and you drag it around you start to see the the staining that you can get now it happens faster with inks contrasts tend to live a bit longer and there are some mediums contrast mediums that you can just chuck on to to give you more time to work with it but all in all, it's considering it's quite warm in here. I've had a humidifier on to try and <laughs> to try and give me some uh, some level of control. Um, I'll try and keep it in camera shot as well. It's same old, same old. But no, it's going to be a good weekend. Um, I think it's one of those weekends where they all those historical buffs dig out the correct films, you know. And I think that's that's the big question for today's show would be with the D-Day landings uh, sort of uh, anniversary this weekend. What films are you going to be picking up and watching any films? Is there any commemorative films that you fancy that you're going to stick on to for that specific period or just something from World War Two? You're going to find time to do that. I love the fact that the wheel storage at the back is is so integral to the to the airframe itself. Now I've gone over the back section uh, initially with grey as well. I know I'm going to go back to yellow. I could have left it clean at this point, but the yellow at the front is going to be an easy line to draw. The one at the back is going to be a bit more difficult. So I'm going to clean that up um, with some grey sear to get some nice clean lines with a smaller brush to so the straight edge because this one's more of a chuck it on brush than it is a control brush. Can just about get around the windows um, here I'm just dragging the color to the bottom sort of section or trying to to generate some shadow in itself so by getting it towards the bottom and taking the excess from the top it should leave a lighter lighter gray at the top hopefully he says but yeah it's been um been a busy week at work 
keep ticking along. We're just starting to come out the other side of uh, what's been one of the busiest spells I've ever done in my service due to flying two squadrons worth of, of pilots instead of one while we transition to the new model of aircraft. Uh, one thing I'm trying to do after I've laid the straight line, I'm trying to get rid of the fact it looks like it was a straight line that's been put on. So I quickly sort of draw it up and down to try and get rid of that straightness. He says. Some dots over that. See we're starting to get some colour on it now. Still moving around some of these wet sort of patches that I can see to get rid of them. It's such a iconic aircraft. I just love the yellow. I think it's uh, that or the almost the the Jaguar sort of pattern, the the white and the black on it. I think is the my two favourite colour schemes for for the European campaign, for the um, sort of the Africa campaign. Well, there's a whole mix. There's a sandy yellow and brown that I'm very fond of, and I like that you can sort of transition to that area do that campaign and essentially get a whole new color scheme available for for your aircraft as well which is cool it means you can buy another box it's going to get a quick slurp oh that's better yeah i had the fans going before but you can hear them chugging away on the on the stream so i've turned them off i'm going to sit here and sweat for a while I might lose a couple of pounds, it'd be useful. Cool, so that's pretty much where I'm just going to get it, at least with the first layer of... So we've got what is a, a light grey on the actual model now. If I go underneath, it's a very pale... You can see how that would blend in with sort of a stormy day or a cloudy day. And I like the, uh, the idea of that. Let's pop this lid on. And there a sec. Right, I'm going to bang on with the yellow next. I'm going to start with the nose while the rest of it dries. Probably move on to the glass of the windows, then come back to the tail. Hopefully it'll be dry by then. Like I say, it's quite warm in here. And under the lamp, it should, shouldn't should take too long. Um, and clean her up with a grey, ready to put the yellow on the tail as well. Interested to see what details we get with the yellow, because um, as a lot of people no doubt know, Yellow is one of the more difficult colours to, to have a play with. Now, this looks awful at the minute. It's kind of a, a really... <laughs> I've given it a good shake, which is good. But you've got a contrast iron in yellow. Now, inside it looks like it's an orangey red. I'm just going to give it another shake, make sure it's not settled anything. I don't use ball bearings or anything in these. I just... But, uh, yeah, when you open it up, it looks like it's, it's going to be quite dark. When you apply it, it's not. So let's give it a go. So this one will be chucking paint straight on from the um, from the pot. <laughs> Dangerous, I know. Uh, I'm very aware that we have a couple of gun channels up on the nose. Let's see if I can get that shot. Mm, maybe. We'll see them in a second. There's basically one either side of the nose here. So they were firing through the prop in these days. Um, it's always something that would worry me. I'm not going to lie getting your head around well if it just fires or the the timer doesn't work quite right will it just destroy it completely or not so like i say as soon as you put it on you can see you've got orange but we take the excess away and it's actually yellow one of the nice things is when that sits into those cracks and crevices that orange really stands out and gives you a a nice sort of colour reference makes it clear that there's detail but like before ooh, he says spinning it around trying to get the aircraft to set off the idea is to to get the detail and then take off the excess so I've got all this by the top of the exhaust on this side just pull all that away and I could just get it back in the pot. That's the good thing. So yeah, looking on top here, Jim's just put up uh, a little reference as well. So we're starting to see the two gun grooves on top of the nose there, running quarter off. It's going to get some of this excess off from around the prop. 
it's like the vents for the intake for the engine yeah and I'm not going to touch them specifically because I want them to be nice and clear but this little spot that's in between them we're going to get rid of that so I'm going to drag that again away so it cleans up the lines and you know that's that's a good start point gives me a nice yellow to work up from we'll chuck on some layered yellow and bring that up further the sort of the ready orange sits in the gaps nice and uh, nice and clean gives you that sort of level of detail that was a quick one that I was quite surprised how quick that went down now I always struggle with this because I always think it looks wrong all the way through doing these things uh, I'm going to grab some contrast uh, Talisar blue next uh, this is basically for the windows uh, but because it's quite a strong color I'm going to sort of mix it 50 50 with the contrast medium break it down and get it to be a lot thinner well there's some uh, information from Jim there on the uh, the Twitch thread. He's also put some on the the YouTube thread. So he mentions on the YouTube that the uh, they tried to mount a third 20 millimeter cannon. Sorry, this is on Twitch, uh, straight through the center of the engine, but uh, most of the pilots had it removed. Uh, the engine had to be largely taken apart to reload or service that gun. Wow. Yeah, that, you'd like to think that <laughs> they'd have thought of that first, wouldn't you? But uh, yeah, you live and you learn. It's amazing what seems like a good idea at the time and then is becomes actually impractical and after you look at it you then go back and go yeah we we should have seen that one coming so i'm gonna like i say load up the brush not too much i want to want to have some blue pigment left and get about a 50 50 mix it's got a little dirty palette i was about to move the camera then but then i'd have to move it back and probably not get it in the right place and spend the next couple of minutes faffing around so I'll stop for a second before I uh, have uh, made you guys wait patiently enough at the beginning which I apologize for so yeah let's um let's see what we can do so the the window panels we put a little bit of white into as well uh, I've switched to a smaller brush now just gonna see about getting some light blue onto them Oh, this is where I have to sort of hold my breath almost trying to get this into the right place. I want the tip loaded of the brush. Try and keep it within the, the actual framework of the windows. So yeah, a little bit different today. Um, Jim's been carrying the load for us all for a while now. I really appreciate him doing that, especially as I've been struggling for time with work and then struggling just to be in the hobby uh, recently. I'm slowly coming back to it, he says. Slowly, slowly. Uh, I'm not too worried here about being too neat. As you can see, we've got some some blues going on there now. Uh, pull in sort of the excess down to the bottom. Keep the top light. A little bit of... Uh, tip of the brush in the mouth to drag any excess down because we're going to paint the framework as well which will should tidy up the lines uh, but we're going to do that after uh, the framework thankfully is going to be quite dark because the spine of the aircraft of the color choice that I want is it's kind of a dark gray and then we'll see how I get on with the speckling I have no idea how that's going to come out because I've not done that for a very long time and I've not actually done it where it mattered so much on a on a model like that. Excuse the phone. That can be put over to one side. That's probably sit rep. <laughs> That's probably a sit rep podcast is live. It's like, yep, yeah, I know. <laughs> if it took that long for the message to come through, <laughs> it shows how good a signal I get, eh? So yeah, on the front we've got sort of a front lower window which should start to appear shortly due to the lighting. Another window above it. It's amazing how much real estate this this is. A quite looks like a quite a large canopy, but from what I remember, it wasn't thought to be too bad. So thinning it down has really helped me allow allowed me it to sort of be a lot more opaque. Uh, allowed me a good level of control 
because it's it's got the, the contrast agent in it to keep it damp for longer so it gives you a bit more time to move stuff around as well get dizzy watching it spin all the time I'd imagine I need to stop doing that <laughs> Let's pick a direction and stick with it eh? difficult with the camera as well because you're kind of not painting where you'd normally the camera is where I'd normally have my head <laughs> um, yeah I'm fairly happy with that uh, we've got sort of a raised bump section here I'm just going to grey that out as well that'd be what I believe is the forward end of the aerial stalk the aerial stalk would run with a support in the centre of the tail up to the tip of the tail uh, probably on top of the vertical stabiliser or this section here the uh, so I'm just going to grab that grey just so I don't forget, because I hate that. When you get towards the end and then you realize you've forgotten something, it's frustrating. So not the gray, sorry, the apothecary, apothecary white. So we're gonna be going over with a darker color, but I want it to be consistent to begin with so we don't get any light and dark spots where we shouldn't have them. Cool. Now I can see a couple of light spots at the front, so I'm just gonna pan all them out while I'm here. Not a bad time now to look at doing some shadowing. So looking at the side profile, you can see it's very light. So I'm just going to do a second layer. All I'm going to do is feather the brush down the lower half of it. And it should bring me some, some shadow without it being too powerful. Uh, the brush is splaying quite a bit at the minute, but for this, it's not as much of an issue as we're just moving colour. Make sure I get the underside of the tail dark and switch sides. So yeah, hopefully uh, everybody's having a good week. Uh, getting plans about... Well, that did take a while. Timestamp 3.31. Yeah, 36 minutes after I went live. My God, I've been on 36 minutes already. Damn. It's going to be a long session based on that. Might not be finishing this tonight. It always seems to be a way you do something. You think, oh, that will take that long. And then realisation sets in, <laughs> along with reality. Uh, with the top of the wings, I just want to do a full second sweep. I removed quite a bit of the excess, so I just want to... Uh, Make sure we've got a nice, clean grey. Well, actually, I want a dirty grey, to be honest. I want a little bit of, you know, wear and, not wear and tear, but the use. We've got a thread of hair in that. Let's get rid of that. Don't want that sticking into the paint. Uh, the underside I'm going to leave with a single layer because I want it that nice, pale, just about grey to give that indication of a view from underneath. That's better. I'm far happy with that now. Some areas I just want to get the. Just going to get off some of the excess where the, the brush sort of strokes have left some lines. Cover around the edges. See, we've got good coverage. I think we're, we're there with the grey. Hmm. And we're there with the grey. So I'm just going to put that down a sec. Pop this lid closed. Oh, kind of looks weird right now. So we're starting to form the colours on the airframe. You can see, or I hope you can see just about, we've got some darkness towards the lower side here through the spine. But the top of it is still showing almost no colour because that's going to get a level of darkness anyway. Now I'm going to leave the framework until the end because I'm probably going to use a pale paint grey. So I get nice clean lines whereas the contrast won't give me that. Quick slurp of a drink. Okay, maybe more than one slip. Oh, that was nice. Cool. So a little bit of repair work at the back, like we said. Uh, I'm just going to grab some... Uh, do I want Grace here? No, I want Wraith Bomb. Because Wraith Bomb was the base colour. So, good job I know where it is, eh? So this is a bit of uh, base colour Wraith Bomb. You can barely see the words due to, due to the colour of it. 
this is what I sprayed it in. Uh, it was just a rattle can job. It wasn't any anything posh like an airbrush. One day that will come out of the box when I lose my fear. <laughs> Man up is the other word. Okay, let's get some water in this because we don't want it to be gloopy. There we go, I should do. Cool. Clean that brush. And um, we're going to a skinny. So, I've still got a little bit of white on this from the, the first round. Just got a little bit of the top that I'm not happy with. There we go. Cool. So I'll probably do this in a layer or two, and when it dries, we'll jump off to somewhere else. I think likely will be the tires next, but I want a line, sort of, from what I've looked at, straight up down line. And I think this was the tail rudder, but this it's one of the few places on the model that's not actually, not actually um, got the clean, defined lines on it. So we're just going to make it our own. So I have to stop for a second and just go straight line. <laughs> Cat talk and do that at the same time. Okay, so I want to make sure that I've got this fairly even on both sides. So I'm just going to mark the top as well because that will get marked anyway and that will give me the angle to come back at it from. Excellent, as Mr. Burns would say. And a line across the bottom. Yep. Just paint up the edge. Side of the brush. Makes the work a little bit easier, keep it clean. Cool. That's the first colour of that down. A quick wipe. So, what to do next? Uh, I'm going to leave the grey of the spine until after that's dried because we're going to be working in that area as well. The underside, I think we're going to look at the tyres there. So, for that, I'm going to go with straight simple, just a black Templar. This is one of the favourite colours that we use. I've not even got that much left in the first pot. It's the first one of my contrasts to run out by a mile by a country mile. Uh, I picked up a second one already. Get a bit on the brush, a bit on the palette, so that's something to move around with. So we've got the sort of the one little wheel back here. So I'm just gonna chuck some it says onto that. And we'll go forward and have a look at the other one. Feels weird coming back to doing historical stuff. Just been doing something completely something that doesn't have a set colour scheme that didn't matter recently, which was kinda nice. Been looking at the MTP colours for sort of modern modern body armour and and kit and equipment. It's, uh, it's quite the challenge these days to, to get stuff to match because the patterns now are so small on the, on the kit itself that paint it onto a 28 mil model is going to be a, a real challenge. I've got some white dragon British infantry that I'd like to do that I'm again scared of because of the, the military patterning so I think I'll be printing off a sergeant sit rep, do some practice on so I'm not sacrificing the, the final minis. And fingers crossed we'll, uh, we'll have a play with the Brits and get some colour on camera. I'm not sure if that one will be a live stream. In fact, it probably will. The, um, the Wednesday night stuff, I think it'll be one of them. Sit down and have a go. Might just focus on a specific part, like the, you know, the chest armourer. Something like that to begin with and see how I get on with it. 
just want to make sure I've got all the wheel. So this will probably go up on YouTube at some point in the next day, tomorrow. Uh, Jim, I kindly asked Jim to uh, put an image together, but that'll be once it's finished. <laughs> Not much point in uh, having the image at the beginning, because <laughs> uh, all you'll have is a sprayed, sprayed miniature. Uh, I'm going to do a second layer now at the back. The back is dry, so I want that to be clean lines. But this time, I'm just going to use the larger brush again, thin it down more. So it should just be a nice, thin, clean sort of colour layer. I'm always scared with these things because you, you try your best, but no member of our team is a professional painter. We always just do what we can and then take the photos after. This is more about having a chat while I do hobby, you do hobby. And if you're catching up later, it's, I'm not sure how much you'll get out of it but hopefully you'll you know you'll just have a bit of background on or something keep keep you keep you interested now I'm kind of edging towards trying the speckle in now because I can always then clean it up while I've got the color on the palette yeah why not risk it for a biscuit go early so for the gray running down the spine the plan is to use some basilicanum gray it's, it's not as dark as the black that we've been using and is a little more controllable and you can essentially just keep adding layers and build it up to give you the color sort of set that you want now do i do the spine first and then dab it no no let's let's just go let's just go for it with the with the <laughs> the sponge man it's been a long time since i've used sponge uh in anything other than model storage so actually i'm gonna get some on the palette first and dab from that. I was going to dab in the pot, but then I'd have no idea how much I was, how deep into the sponge it was gone. Just end up turning the whole thing into a, one colour with timely dabs of sponge. Okay, so got some on the end of the sponge. Just going to get rid of some of the excess on the, on the paper. Cry a little bit. Try and use the corner. Let's see if we can. We're getting something. That's where I go over the windows and stuff now. Actually, we're getting less than I thought we would, so that's kind of scary. Because that means it's probably deeper in the sponge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! If you hear any background noise, apologies. The uh, soundproofing on this building's not great. My neighbours downstairs or people going past outside, you might hear. Scary times, trying to get this into the right place. I'm not too worried about getting it too high up because we're going to panel out the, the back as well. I want a little bit under the glass, but I'm kind of scared at the same time. Oh, it's got some, some pattern in there, I quite like that. Let's even go on the other side. Again, not talking, concentrating. <laughs> That's going to go a bit higher as well. It's going to cover the back of the chassis. Switch my grip. Cheers, Jim. We'll see. We'll see at the end when it's in the booth if it's all over the place. Probably going to have speckle cam where it never had it in real life, like on the windows. Right, I'm not. I'm not willing to risk anymore with that. Let's have a quick look at the at what we've got. So we've got some speckle in, sort of running down the side of the tail. A little bit not as good on this side. It's a little bit heavier on this side. Luckily, we're going to sort that out anyway. And I'm just going to grab the brush and do a little bit of tidying up myself with the brush get off the excess and I think this is just going to be easier just to do with some small brushwork to tidy up where it's missing some
we get some level of calm. The first attempt, the first side was definitely better. I think I need a, I think the sponge was actually a little too soft. So it was allowing it to go into places where I didn't really want it. So we'll see how it comes. Cool. Right, we're just going to drag the spine while we're here. Get it on the pallet. So for this, I think we're just going to go behind the gun mount, back up to the, the front window chassis. You can see it's got a nice level of opaqueness to it. It's not just blacking out the dead black the whole area. I think it's quite important to try and achieve. And I'm just sort of feathering it down from the spine, trying to control how far down it comes. Initially, I'm wanting to get it level with the, the cockpit glass. And as it goes to the tail, thin it down so it should just hopefully go up the tail to where we're going to have the yellow. Even on that side, just even that out. Okay, we're going to let that dry and see see what that looks like. You can see the sort of the color scheme. It looks a bit weird with the cockpit not having been yet. I think we're going to have to just go up to see the edge of the cockpit. I think we need to just get underneath that frame. The frame itself is going to be straight and black, but I think we'll switch to the smaller brush and. Uh, do a, a feather in underneath, see what that looks like. As I say, I always struggle because you shouldn't really judge your model until you get to the end of all your processes and then you've got an idea of what it actually is going to look like. Drag a straight line, give me some defining line work in there. Sides the same. Then stop concentrating. I can talk again. Um, I'm a big fan of these models. To be fair, they. Um, I think they want. I don't know actually. I was about to say I think they want 200 scale, but I'm not actually sure. It's something I've not looked into. I should probably give that a look and then find out. I think I knew when we did the last one, the, the Fuck Wolf episode, what they were. So we're going to, where the aerial mount point was, so obviously the wire's not there, it would be ridiculously thin. I think I might have some wire at work that would work, but chances of it staying intact in the carry case is practically zero, <laughs> unless it was magnetised. Uh, all the models were magnetized into the carry case. Okay, so I'm tempted now to put this onto the framework. We're gonna we're gonna give it a go. It being a contrast, it's it's got more likelihood to move around than the normal stuff. But we shall see. Let's get some straight line work done first. I don't know what time it is. I need to keep an eye on running time. Oh, so we're coming up to about an hour. I'm not sure how much paint time due to the delayed start, but hopefully, uh, I doubt many of you uh, caught the last minute messages that went out about the session being in UK time rather than the normal US time. I say Jim's been doing a sterling job. If you haven't seen his BMP uh, episode, you need to go and check that bad boy out. Uh, with the stowage on now as well, it, it's just absolutely give it character, brought it even more to life than it already was. There's a level of sort of dirty dustiness to the, I love it, the way he's got the final colours laid down on it as well. It's done superb work. Oh, let's get these vertical. Mm. 
Whose idea was it to start painting models on streams? It's more of a professional paint. We should just talk rubbish and abuse each other. Some people outside, I'm just about here. I don't know if the mic's picking it up. The nice weather brings everybody out and about. Car music. center line at the back right I think that's the first sort of happy with that it's gonna toughen up some of the colors here and there on the, on the top of the nose so I'm just darkening down the, the center sort of portion now um, leaving the edge sort of breaking down towards the speckles I think this is gonna be an interesting one to see how it comes out I know that some of the contrasts can have a shine uh, but I've recently picked up a new matte coat uh, that I'll probably chuck on post production to see because it just won't have dried enough for me to chuck it on early. Uh, the matte coat I picked up, I'll bring into camera in just a sec, is this one. I heard really good things and reviews about it. It's a Mecca varnish from Vallejo. Gives you a nice matte varnish. Again, it's water based, can be run through an airbrush. I think I'll be putting it on with brushes. Just so I've got a good level of control on it, but we shall see. And once it's in the photo booth, that should help a little bit because half the time lighting is is a key factor, I think, in a good photo. You um, you need to get that lighting in a good place. At the minute, I've kind of got a good setup. I I just was sick of struggling with camera shots and such I don't have a very good camera so I uh, took the bit of the bullet sorry and, and purchased a, a little photo booth I found that the lights actually too bright it's a controllable one but the lowest settings not low enough so I threw in a well I call them a tea towel you know what you dry the dry the pots with for those of you that let's do that and um, yeah it's 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 kind of nice uh, I won't be doing the decals on this today. We're just basically going to do the flat colours and then go from there. Uh, happy with the speckling. I think we're going to carry that into other parts of the airframe, maybe the wings. Uh, next, I'm just going to grab the yellow again. We're going to sort that tail fin out that we did before. Got a shake in. Yeah, so um, we're definitely gonna have to bring up the yellow. The the yellow is kind of a start point. We want that nice, uh, really punchy yellow finish. Laying this over the, bit too much. Laying this over the wraith bone start point gives you a nice, nice, clean area to to have a go at. Gives you a good yellow to begin with. But it's just, it's got a paleness to it and an opaqueness that doesn't give you a clean, strong, painted feel. I think the final part that will bring this together is going to be the, the putting on of the decals. Because um, it is, uh, it's going to obviously have the, a German marking here, German marking on the tail. Some have had the lines down the side, some of them were numbered. I'm not sure which way I'm going to go with that. I'll do a bit of research, make sure I've got the, the right sort of look. But let's stick him there for a second. Now for the yellow, I'm thinking... I've got two, essentially. I've got Uriel yellow and Flash Kits yellow. And there's a... I'm just going to shadow. So the Uriel's sort of a darker, strong start, and then the Flash Kits would be the highlight. So I think those two are going to be the yellows that we're going to have a go with. I want to have a look at these wings. Now it looks like there's a, you know, there's a lot of space there and there's nothing going on. But again, there's going to be a decal with the 
so the, the German black uh, cross section with the white edging potentially depending on what year uh, on either side top and on the bottom so that whole section here will actually end up hidden so how much work do we really want to put in I think doing some of the speckle camo on the wing top might be worth a look what do you guys think seems a bit plain here at the minute but like I say I've got to keep in mind that we're going to be almost probably a third of that wing is going to be covered with a, 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 a marking Not many slopes left. Hmm. Cool. Well, in the meantime, the section in the middle is still drying. Uh, the yellow of the nose will definitely be dry. So we're just going to grab some of that Uriel yellow and start working on the nose. Going to bring them colours, make them cleaner. Just got a bit of water in that, not that much. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, so any of you guys going to be joining us at the weekend, let us know. Let me just see in the pop in the comments. If there's anything specific you'd like us to have, maybe have a chat about uh, in relation to the D-Day landings, um, that might be something to, to put into comments as well. That way we've got some of the subject matter that you'd like to see. So I'm nicely thinned down, so let's get some of this on. So hopefully this will just bring up the colors a little bit uh, I'm not going to do underneath that much because I want it nice and dark in places the exhaust we're going to go back and visit this lower section these bars the exhaust are coming out the side of the engine bay I'm going to use the flash gets on the top side to give a punchy yellow at the top so this one's just got a slightly darker setting than the flash gets yellow that should give us that more shadowed look I'm hoping cool I don't know how if this is a, a game that's played that much over in the US. I think uh, Wallard being a British company, from what I know, I'm not sure if Blood Red Skies has got a big following um, in many places outside of the UK. I'd like to think that there's certain, I mean, they brought in the Pacific, a lot of the Pacific aircraft are now in it, the Zeros and, and such, so it'd be good to know if, if there is a player base over there that's as strong I know gaming communities are pretty different UK to to US there's a, like a distinct difference with gaming clubs and gaming stores being used differently due to how the, the areas are laid out as a sort of all within a few miles of town centres rarely that big so there's gaming clubs you get quite a lot of people in a very small space to to be able to come and attend events so yeah we're just making this nice clean yellow which is uh, coming off quite nicely now there you go Jim's in hello Vorpal boy how are you today hopefully you're well Jim's happy that there'd be some uh, shenanigans in the Pacific using aircraft as well. I do like the, the Zeros, uh, are one of my favourite planes from the, the series that they've done. Um, the Corsair has been another really nice aircraft. To be fair, there isn't there isn't really a bad aircraft. My mate Mark's picked up some mosquitoes. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing them. I'm not looking forward to to fighting, <laughs> going to the air against them as well. The Wildcat I'm a big fan of. Uh, so yeah, there's a few aircraft in there that are, that are definitely on my wish list. It's one of them. It becomes dangerous. With the scale, 
And there's some really nice mats. I picked up a nice deep cut mat that has sort of a very nice rural setting. Um, and with the clouds are already on the map and such. Uh, what do I have here? So this is uh, Blood Red Skies uh, Messerschmitt 109E uh, from around 1940-1941. Nice small scale. Uh, previous on the channel I covered when I did the Focke-Wolf 190s that were the first plane I went for because um, my friends generally play the Brits. I wanted something a bit different. I didn't want to just go, we don't want to go straight to the Battle of Britain because it's kind of done to death. So I picked up the Fock Wolves, which are a bit of a beast, and uh, that's where it all began. Now moving forward, as we get a bit more, a bit more um, used to the rules and, and want to play with bigger scenarios and putting bombers and such. So today I picked up one of these. Not sure if I'm happy with the color scheme or not yet. It'll be one of them. Suck it and see. This is the first time I'm throwing the scheme down. I think the second layer of grey on top may be a bit too dark. Tried a bit of speckling with sponge, which I've not done for a very long time. Uh, we're going to try a bit more on the wings shortly. In fact, let's give that a go now. Uh, and see what we get. What he says. Right. See how this goes. Round two with the sponge. I definitely feel this is just a little too soft for what we want. not giving me I even plucked it to try and give me some level of control with it as well but as I say I'm aware that on the on the wings themselves we're going to be putting on the markings top and bottom so there's 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 less need to be as neat with what I achieve on the wings it's going to break up the the patterning with the same same sponging that we did on the on the other side and the good thing is, these are so small that if you're not happy with it at the end, yeah, just stick it back in the spray booth. Uh, contrast paints are quite thin, so should be all right. Doesn't it need struts under the elevator as well? You tell me. If you're asking, that means you must know. Yeah, a little bit extra on the side, get a bit lower. So we got that transition all the way through, I think. Well, there'll be a lot of things missing on the model due to its scale, I'd imagine, and Warlord only do a certain amount. So that's the look from underneath. Um, with the sort of the, the we used a, a pocket theory white just to bring out the details. So you could see the panel lines and such to make it a bit easier. It's got the folded up undercarriage. Um, it's got a, just the initial aerial mount point. It hasn't got a centre or rear. Um, there you go. See? Told you. So as you can have a look. Um, but like I say, the, I really like them for the scale that they're at. Uh, I think the, the grey on the top, so the, the, the grey we did a couple layers of, I think I'm finding it's a bit too dark. So I'm going to bring that back. I think I'm going to look for a, a grey to run over that. See if we can reverse that a little bit and just see what I've got. Yeah, that might do. Uh, so I'm just going to bring it back with a dashing grey. It's kind of one of the darker greys. You know, we'll thin it down and just do a layer over. Hopefully, take some of the edge off the darkness of it. Give that a quick shake. Water's got a nice yellow tint to it now, which is quite funny. Looks like uh, some that I've done in the night when needed to do something in an emergency. You don't buy small miniatures. That's a shame. It must be difficult to play a tabletop game at that scale.
or is it mainly scale modeling? Take it king and country is a game. So I'm just going to go in with this grey and just bring back that. It's gone to almost black, so it's not ideal. But we need to check the time soon, actually. Probably want to be running for maybe about 90 minutes at the max. A little over an hour. Oh, King of Country is a manufacturer. Is that a scale model then, I imagine, at that sort of size? I think scale modeling is a completely, obviously, different game because the big part of that is being historically correct in almost every detail, or as much as people know. It always makes me laugh when they, they do their paint jobs uh, because they'd have to have just come out the factory to be correct and rarely, rarely kept that colour and shade after being sun bleached and such. Or repaired in the field a few times, as I definitely know from experience. <laughs> yeah, patchy black is green. That's quite funny. 100% Puta shop in Hong Kong. Is that where you are then in the world? Are you that, that way in the. Or is it something you get shipped from Hong Kong? That's a lot of Puta, that actually. Must admit, I 3D print a lot of stuff now. There's so much available online, and the level of detail on some of them's really nice. It's definitely becoming more and more mainstream. Yeah, I think we brought that back a little bit better. Indiana, USA. Oh, so you must get them shipped over then. Is there much import tax on stuff like that then? From uh, shipping overseas? No, we get hit reasonably hard in the UK with it. In fact, I've not done it since we did Brexit, so I'm not sure if it's changed worse or better either. Last time I got someone shipped was a crystal case from America, from Crystal Fortress. That cost me a bomb in shipping. I didn't realise I was going to be hit quite so hard at this end. Okay, so we're just going to tidy up the chassis frames on the cockpit. <clears throat> That's a big wingspan. I definitely need a bigger, well I've not got a shelf, so I need a shelf for a start. I don't think I've got anywhere I could put it, other than in a box. I am older. Yeah, I imagine we're, some of us are reasonably old. Not quite 40 years in the hobby, I'm not like 32, 33, but... Uh, I definitely like to to keep my options open these days. So much stuff that's really cool out there now.
How about now? Yep, there we go. Uh, cold steeled it, pulled the plug, put the plug back in. I love it. Uh, the problem is I've got the mic quite close to me, so it doesn't take much for me to just nudge it a little bit so that we get some semi-decent sound. And the mic is, is, is a reasonable size. <laughs> Uh, so, um, no, so the, the stands are from the company of Warlord, um, allowing you to sort of tilt the aircraft to show different states during the game. They come with a triangular fitting, which I've stuffed, I've shaped the top of this toothpick to go into, so I've got something to hold the aircraft and, and get around the model quite easy. So all I did was cut that off, smooth it down, and then took a drill to recess it for the ball, super glued the ball into the, sash, uh, into the stand itself. And then the top section is a barrel assembly, that has a recess in it and a flat section at the top. Stuck the flat section over the hole, and uh, yeah, you've got the the recess section to fit on the ball. And it's really nice for for banking around. Uh, one thing I like about this particular airframe is the the markings they had uh, under the wings, uh, the red markings, uh, as so you could see what what position you were in relation to the formation. But yeah, I like the fact that. These two are sort of a different, you know, shapes and sizes. So it'll, it'll make for a nice force when I get a combined color scheme. I think I'll definitely keep the yellow. I think I'll carry a similar pattern, but not quite the same from the wings of the Fock Wolf across to the Messerschmitt. Uh, the speckling, it was okay initially, but no, nah, it's, it's not good enough. I'm not happy with it. And that's fine. You know, that's what these sessions are sometimes about. Uh, making my own stand is what is keeping me out of the aircraft miniatures. Oh, okay, yeah, that's understandable. I, I mean, was that for the sixty mil as well? So yeah, that's going to be a, a, a chunky, a chunky piece of kit to to keep that. The, I, I don't know what it support sixty mil. It should support these. These are do a size that should support a sixty mil model. Uh, because the. One of the vehicles I've got that I use in a sci-fi game, the X-Wing game, is probably 85 mil long. Um, so I think you, you might be able to, to, to do that. Wings of Glory biplanes, yeah, they're nice. Oh, the Butcher, and Jim said, yeah, the Fuck Wolf 190, Butcher Bird is the I sometimes call it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing... Our first game is next week of uh, Blood Red Skies when my friend comes over for the first time since we... Uh, well, since I stopped going and going around to people's houses and having people come over was September last year. So we uh, had a session last week, just a catch-up one, um, and seeing how we'll get on with that. Uh, <laughs> after have to relearn all the things again. I've had a chat with him. He's happy to do some some filming sessions. I just need to look into it, what camera. The, this camera is all right, but it doesn't uh, have an auto zoom facility. It's very good. It goes out of focus a lot. So I think I'll have to use a, a phone camera or something to start with, and we'll see how we get on. Uh, having a clear to make telescopic stands. Uh, I mean, there's lots of communities out there. I mean, hit up some of the forums. Um, it's the one specifically for. Um, for King and Country on you know a Facebook forum that you might be able to get into and and kick around that that question and people you normally find have done them. So it's a it's a the community is now seem to be very switched on with a lot of stuff. Uh, you got a game next week. Quickly pay it off. <laughs> awesome two six two. So that'd be nice. That's a that's gonna be a good visual as well. It's gonna be a good visual. Well, so we had a play with some basic colours. Um, I'm happy with some elements. I'm not happy with others. Uh, I think the three yellows bring the aircraft to a point where the yellow is punchy enough that I'd be happy with that in itself. Uh, I'm not happy with the second grey I used was okay. Uh, over the black, it's probably darkened down. So I think we'll, this one will definitely be going back in the meat grinder. Um, I use Biostrip 20, so tomorrow this will be going like this into the uh, English Channel, uh, made up of, of that particular product to strip it back down and uh, we'll have another look at it and like I say I'm happy I know that some of them actually had the wing sections at the end yellow with this one being pretty much all dark with just the, the tip of the tail as a yellow I think this one carrying more yellow and, and doing that final section of the wings would actually be be quite nice I'm just gonna chuck a bit on and see 
me what it looks like. If it's still wet enough. Yeah, you can get something on it, yeah. So yeah, a bit of trial and error tonight, guys. Um, hopefully, you know, just something, a little bit of chat, get us, uh, get me back into, into the rhythm a little bit. Um, so yeah, they have a marking similar to that, and then they have a single line marking, which I won't be able to use that for. It's reasonably thick over the tail as well, you know where the, the number marking would be. Swallow make do three three fives. I don't believe so, or at least not last time I looked. Um, they do have quite the, quite the range, and it is ever growing. It's Blood Red Sky has been around quite a while now, so they, they're always expanding in different directions. And to be honest, once I got the two squadrons that I was really after, I've not actually looked for an update for a little bit. And with COVID and everything else, I've kind of, I've not bothered. But yeah, maybe worth a look. Maybe worth a look. See, see if you can find what they've got. So I think um, I think that's where the yellow is going to be in the end. So a sidebar at the back where it should be, the so the, the tail yellowed out, and uh, the tips of the wings and the the engine casing, all underneath where the intake goes in, the exhaust come out. Um, I think we'll give that a go. I think we'll go with a lighter grey up the top. And uh, I need to look if these also have any markings on the rear of the wings to show flight position to each other and friendly and enemy planes. Be a, an interesting one. Uh, the cockpit colour uh, is kind of a brighter blue. I like the faded blue. So, so yeah, lo lots of lessons learned. The Luckily, I, this is one of the reasons I've not put the decals on or even looked to start early because I don't want to waste a set of decals on a plane that's going to get stripped <laughs> but uh yeah hopefully um hopefully something something as a start point for me something to 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 put on your wednesday afternoon your wednesday evening um hopefully you you all got a little something for it if nothing more than a little bit of a chat and uh having a look at the time now we're pretty much there i said around 90 minutes it's just coming up to half nine at night here in the uk so um yeah i think we'll um we'll give that one a dip we'll bank off into the sunset with uh with a previous sortie of uh, of miniatures get a couple more out tag them up and we'll get the uh the formation cutting across the sky so thanks very much for coming out guys and hopefully we may see you in another one soon uh, Sunday which is 6th of June so we're going to be talking a little bit about D-Day we've got some other stuff lined up uh, we're doing the news as normal on the podcast uh, that should go out shortly after Jim I believe you've got a game that night as well uh, looking forward to seeing what that one is your last one was an absolute blinder so uh, looking forward to another session and uh, yeah it'd be great thanks very much for coming out Jim uh, Vorpal Bite uh, who else did we have at the beginning we had Phil I believe Yep, Phil, thank you very much for coming out, and uh, who knows, maybe I'll catch you in the next one. Take care out there, guys. Stay safe and amongst all that's going on, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.